Hello everybody, I'm Ron Luce. If I haven't got to meet you personally yet, I hope I get to at some point. Welcome to Project 13. Welcome to a revolution. Welcome to a whole new way of reaching and impacting young people in your city, in your town. As you might know, we study churches all around the world that are truly remarkable at reaching and discipling young people. And this is the very first step, the very first video to help you launch Project 13. Now, you may have got the flash drive already, that's great. But if you watch this first, it will help you get set up for success. We're gonna talk just for a few minutes today about the Project 13 Task Force. Now, we encourage churches to find five people, not a million, just five, to begin helping you to plan Project 13 right there in your church. So we're gonna review the five members, what they do and who to look for, because you're gonna to wanna to go after them, recruit them, and get them to come to the very first meeting in just a few weeks. Now, I encourage you as you're looking, these might be people that are already volunteers for, in the church, maybe they're volunteering for the uh, youth ministry already or some other area in the church, or they may not be. They might be uh, entrepreneurs in your church that have a heart for God, um, they, but they don't know how their skill can help make a difference. All they know how to do is give money. Well, I encourage you to look for entrepreneurs because if you need more helpers, they've got more bandwidth. In other words, they can choose to spend more time on their business or not. They're good managers. They're good um, uh, discipline as far as their own time, what they do with their time and things like that. And uh, they know how to get things done. So Project 13 Task Force, there's five members. And I want to encourage you, we're going to go over these five and for you to start thinking about who might be the person that could fill that role because you're going to want them all there. And of course, there'll be more people that help you with Project 13 in your town in your, as you reach the young people in your town, those that are in your church, but at least five in the room. So you might remember this. Um, there's four best practices that all these churches that we studied do, and they do them better and better and better. And so most, for the most part, the five task force members uh, have to do with these different jobs. And then of course you, the youth pastor, pastor and leader. So the first one here is training young leaders to be disciple makers. So we'll have somebody in charge of that. Number two, we'll have somebody in charge of hosting epic events a couple times a year that are specifically geared towards those most likely to come to Christ. Number three, somebody in charge of the pathway, deep dive disciple making. And then number four, somebody in charge of the ecosystem for the whole church to engage. So these five members of the task force, of course, there'll be other volunteers that help them, that help you along the way. So these, these are the, uh, the five members you're going to look for. So number one is change management. Now, if you're the senior pastor, this is you. Seniors, leaders, or, or somebody really closely connected to the pastor, an executive pastor that can really help the heart of the church begin to love young people, care about young people, and, and that kind of thing. And so the best choice is the senior pastor. Um, you're engaging as the senior pastor, all levels of leadership, deacons, elders, staff, volunteers, letting them know we as a church are going to start focusing on the young generation. It's not that we're turning the church into a youth group or not, and it's not that we're building a really cool uh, appendage called the youth group. We're building a church that loves the young generation. We've, we're going to hyper equip the next gen team and they're going to be great, but it is going to take the whole church to really pray and get involved um, in mentoring and things like that. So because we understand we, you as a church leader, we as leaders in the body of Christ, we understand it's not about building a cool youth group. It's not even about attendance. It's about reaching and discipling people. And the most likely people to be reached are those when they're before they're 20 years old. So let's just be smart about building our church. Instead of doing a million things, let's really do some things really, really well and maximize the money, the time, the volunteers, everything that we spend. So as you are leading this department, this area, uh, change management. You're engaging all letter, letter, levels of leadership, elders and the board, the staff, volunteers, engaging parents of youth before you announce the whole vision to everybody else. Um, and the idea is you're trying to engage the whole church. Now we've given all these job descriptions on a PDF, so hopefully you're able to follow along as we're talking about these things. At some point, when it's right, pastor, you'll be introducing this 
to the whole congregation. The Project 13 vision, uh, we're going to reach the young people in our region. This is how many people are there. These are some of the struggles they're going through. You're going to be uh, casting vision. You'll have visuals. You'll have data from your county, your town. Um, you'll want to document all the levels of engagement, all the different ways they could be involved. Maybe you do a sermon series for four weeks on, you know, uh, what's going on with young people, why we need to be involved, how you can find a young person um, to love and to begin to see life through their eyes. What you're really doing with change management is wooing their hearts. It's not just you're introducing a program. You're wooing their hearts. Hey, let's pray for this for young people this week. Let's pray next week for this for young people. Do you know how many pregnant teenagers, girls are in high school right now? Let's pray for them. And each week it's a different thing with visuals, maybe videos, and you're wooing their heart. Um, and so over, over a series of weeks, it's not going to all happen at one time. And so it's casting vision, wooing hearts, casting vision, wooing hearts, and giving them the reason why we're doing this. And you kind of have to remember that once you cast the vision, they don't get it. You're going to have to reiterate and reiterate different, different facets of it. You have to keep it in front of them, maybe put banners in the church. Um, we care about the young generation. And I have to tell them and remind them it's not going to happen without work and with, without sweat and without endurance. Uh, we've got a plan. We're putting the plan together, but we need you guys to be engaged. And so that's, that's the, um, the focus of, of this person. And pastor, it's engaging the heart, inviting uh, adults and senior leaders to be a part of mentoring. So what are their life skills? And um, what, what could they impart? Maybe do they know how to start a business? Um, do they know how to knit? Do they play basketball? Uh, uh, some other hobby or job skill? Do they know how to do an interview? Uh, and teach the young person how to do an interview to, to get a job, to put a resume together. And so uh, your, uh, part of your job is to get the rest of the church, first of all, praying and then engaged in that number four. And uh, we've got other links for you, other videos that you can watch. The heart of change. People don't do what is logical. They do what they feel. And so part of our job as leaders of a church, leaders of change management, is how do we connect with their heart, get their heart engaged by telling stories, by getting them to pray. Uh, we've given you a PDF book, How to Build Your Ecosystem. Senior pastor, this is gonna be something that you'll get a lot out of. And if you have somebody that's in charge of the senior citizens, the senior adults, the gray uh, haired wisdom people in your church and or the parents um, uh, of teenagers in your church, um, you can also get them engaged to help you with this. So that's number one, um, change management. Number two, second person on your task force is managing the pathway. Now, this is possibly the youth pastor or the spouse of the youth pastor. And what's really important about this is that what you're doing is, of course, you're making sure the tools are there, the books are there, everything that they need to, um, be prepared for, um, you know, the uh, pathway to freedom and so forth. But um, but you're really putting together this transformational process you've heard me talk about. Uh, and so uh, you, if you're leading as a, as a youth pastor, you might want to lead this yourself, either that or your spouse lead this one, um, uh, or vice versa on managing the leaders, uh, young leaders. But you're helping to identify who are the first possible leaders that you want to invite into this. Um, you want to make sure you're deciding like, and maybe the whole task force is involved in when should we meet? How should we meet? Um, what time? A lot of churches are doing this on a Wednesday night now. Um, you might have your young leaders, candidates come in advance of Wednesday night and do their weekly meeting with you then before the youth group starts. But when you're thinking about when does everybody who joins the pathway, when do they start to meet? You can do it on Wednesday night or whatever night you meet. So you'll wrestle through that. So for example, if you meet for an hour and a half, you could take the first 45 minutes, have a shorter worship time, a shorter uh, speaking ministry time, break everybody up into groups. Some will be in pathway groups because you've trained the leaders and people have signed up to go through all 12 weeks of the trimester. And some will be in ad hoc groups just until uh, you know, they're, they're visitors, they're coming until the next trimester starts and they can do that. Uh, as a leader of the pathway, 
you're managing it, you're making sure that they're quality conversations, you're making sure that there's really a transformational, a beautiful process that's unfolding. Um, and you're, you're, you're watching it. Think of yourself, pa youth pastor, as like COO of spiritual formation. You're watching formation happen as they're meeting with Jesus each day. Now remember, going through this, these tools, it's not curriculum. It's helping them to have a connection with Jesus every single day. And one of the biggest challenges we find is getting people to actually meet with Jesus every day. It's not doing the homework in a book. If they even mention the word homework, we've missed the whole point. And so the, as they're meeting with Jesus, it's only a couple pages a day. If you've introduced it correctly, we have it all laid out in the, in the PDFs, exactly how to introduce them at, at, to Project 13 and to a trimester where you get them to say yes and commit all 12 weeks. If the leaders are trained correctly, you're, they're leaning into them each day. The, the, the weekly meetings should be fantastic then because, oh, Jesus spoke to me this on Wednesday and then on Friday and this and I got challenged this way and they're talking about their prayer needs and how God, they need God's help and God convicted them about this or that. So one of the things as leading the pathway is really working hard on getting as many young people as you can from the altar or from the commitment uh, to Christ um, into the pathway of growth. So that starts at first with the young leaders, then it starts with the next iteration of maybe young people in your youth group, getting them to begin to do it. And then as you start doing epic events, all the micromanaging of all the baby steps, and we've got it all laid out for you, but you're gonna wanna really hunker down with the rest of your um, task force uh, members to make sure that that's being done really well. You wanna make sure part of your role is making sure that the measurement and the assessment tools are, are being used and that you've got your encounter. At the end of each trimester, there's an encounter and you plan that in advance at the end of each trimester. You ought to put on the calendar when each trimester starts, when each trimester ends for the next year or so. So it's, there's no confusion, everybody's clear, and those encounters are really very important. So um, I just wanna encourage you um, that uh, you, you know, this person's probably gonna be you as, the, as a youth pastor. Now, we've mapped out all the details, making the journey legendary, that you're gonna need, all the details I just went over real quick, that you would need to how to make every detail matter, okay? Remember, our goal here is making lifelong followers of Jesus. And a definition of a disciple, you maybe heard me talk about this before, it's the lifelong pursuit. It's not a class, it's not a trimester, it's the rest of their life. So we're teaching them to be pursuing Jesus the rest of their life, becoming more like Jesus, learning from Him, and experience his reality. So we want them to learn from him, his word, but we want them to experience Jesus as well each day in their quiet time. You'll see as a part of that booklet, there's a whole facilitator's guide there. And so you're going to, in concert with the person who leads the young leaders, making sure they're facilitating well. In fact, some churches will take this guide that you've got in that PDF and talks about all the details. How do they facilitate well? They're not teaching. They don't preach that's not their role their role is to help facilitate the connection with the lord each day as they're having quiet times and a connection with each other and the lord as they meet each week so you can take a few of these points of the facilitator's guide and train the leaders each week just a little bit better and reiterate uh, with them again and again we put a whole bunch of details in your in your booklet there on exactly what to do to make sure that the young leaders are having a great experience and we put a p whole pdf on the the assessments and so the assessments are something that and we've got a video that'll show you how to put all the assessments into a, a qr code so it's real easy and they get sucked into a, a, a spreadsheet so you can see one of the assessments we ask people to do for example at the beginning and the end of each trimester is you maybe heard me talk about this in just like in a physical world there's newborn there's infant toddlers different stages of life we re-explain this, and then we say spiritually, there's newborns and there's infants and toddlers. And as we grow and as we mature spiritually, we become young adults and adults and middle age and, and senior citizens. In other words, we're growing in our faith. We're not just going to church. We're growing in our faith. And the, the more mature you get, the more freedom you get, 
the more responsibility you get, the more impact, the more God trusts you to impact other lives. And so the idea is we're trying to regularly say, this is where we want to be. We want to go out here. We want to grow. We want you to grow. And then ask him to self-identify, where do you think you are on this? So, you know, um, a newborn, just like a newborn baby, is going to mess their pants. That's a newborn Christian messing their pants, making mistakes, challenges that they're dealing with. But you don't want to stay there. You know, you know, uh, if you're messing your pants and you're a teenager or a preteen, that's not funny. That's not interesting. No one wants to know that. And so we introduce this and ask them to self-identify at the beginning of each trimester. And they can put it right on a QR code, and then at the end of each trimester, so they can go, they can see they make, now it is self-reporting, but at least they can see they're making progress. And then we have assessments every four weeks that you can use, and that's part of the job description of somebody else, but you, as managing the pathway, you want to make sure that those things are being done. So that's number two. Number three is training the young leaders. Now, this might be the spouse of the youth pastor, maybe somebody else that's a, a trusted leader. So part of your role, and it's, it, you're going to be working really close, if this, is, it, this person's going to be working close with the youth pastor, is uh, first identifying who are the first potential leaders. Um, that is, they've showed character, they've been around for a while, they've been faithful. So this person is recruiting them, and they're having the one-on-one -on -one conversations with them. We've actually spelled that out very carefully in the PDF you just saw. So it's really important you don't ask, who wants to be a leader? None of that. You can start giving vision, but you want to talk to people one-on-one. -on -one. Listen, we have a heart for this young generation. We're going to be reaching so many more, and we are going to need a lot of disciple makers. And we think you just might be qualified to be one of those. Would you come to an invitation-only meeting? We'll talk more about it. And that's where you share the vision of Project 13, what's going to happen over these next months, and would they commit for the next 12 weeks? Number one, meet with Jesus every day. Two, let's come and talk about it. So you're, you're inviting them on the journey of the two books at the same time. That is Pathway to Freedom and Pathway to Leadership. Trimester one for each of those. So you're, the very first meeting, you're planning like within the next month. This You're going to set a date and start inviting people because this is not something that happens way off in the future. It starts happening right now. But the very first step is recruiting the leaders, inviting them to that invitation-only meeting, and then making sure that you've... Uh, uh, ordered your books in advance so you're ready to give them out for those that are ready to step up. I would say the youth pastor and your team should be going through Pathway to Freedom with the first group of young leaders. You want to experience it with them. And it might be the youth pastor or your, the spouse may be actually leading some of those groups, uh, the first initial groups of young leaders, those 12 weeks. That's great because whatever experience they have, Whatever transformation they have, that's what they will reproduce um, in others when they're leading. And so even though you might feel like you're way more mature than you don't need it, go through trimester one with them and trimester one of Pathway to Leadership and say, hey, the Lord spoke to me. This is what I'm doing. Oh, this is what I got out of that scripture, things like that. The skills needed for this role, uh, identifying people with quality character, holding people accountable, attracting people. Uh, of higher caliber, higher caliber, and the ability to nurture leadership in others. Now, this making the the leader uh, making the journey legendary is one of your key tools because it has a lot of the details that I just described. The facilitator's guide is in there that I mentioned before, but also the details of how to host that first meeting, how to invite people, and you're also going to get a lot of uh, tools in this one. Maximizing new converts, becoming disciples. So. You're going to want to just devour this, this, this person who leads this uh, team. You're going to learn all the precise steps to take to get somebody from the altar into not just church, but into growth. So remember, our goal here is to build this transformational process. And the person who's managing the leadership is really a, a key role in building this transformational process. Okay, There's a lot of nuance to it. It's not just, here's the book, go through it. There's all kinds of soft skills and, you know, are, and, and you're training the young leaders in those soft skills. So remember, these are the first two books, Pathway to Freedom, Trimester One, Pathway to Leadership, Trimester One. Young people will go through these, the potential leaders will go through these together for the first 12 weeks before you even announce it to the rest of the world, right? And so you, this person's going to make sure you've ordered these in time. We suggest 
you have maybe maybe aim for 10 people, 10 young people at first. Maybe you have a bigger church, you have more than that, that's great. But order these in advance so you've got them ready to give out and then look real carefully in the book how we talk about presenting this, how to get people engaged, make an appointment with Jesus, get them to commit to meet with him every day. And so you really kick them off right. We've got a second pathway to, to leadership trimester two that the young people can do after this. We have a very uh, carefully laid out connect group format, like what to do in your small group. So it's not just, hey, kind of hanging out. They're learning. They're being vulnerable. They're praying for each other. They're, they're learning from each other what God is speaking to each other. And and so we've got very clearly spelled out for you, if you're overseeing the leaders, what that facilitator should be doing. And so uh, you, you can see that in, in all the tools, so um, in, in all the PDFs we've talked about. Um, the next one is the person in charge of epic events. Now this is probably the heaviest lift. Let me say in advance, we're putting something together that's like an, a nationwide epic event in the fall of 2025 called Surge. If you want information, just search our website for that. And it's kind of a just add water. You can host it in your church. We're praying for a thousand host churches all across the country to impact a hundred thousand young people. So that could really help you with one of your two epic events. But this person, their roles and responsibility, um, they, it, this is probably the heaviest lift. It's the most intense. Um, you've got to wrestle through when are the best dates. Um, and we have a whole, all sorts of tools to help you figure out when, how to figure out the best date for your city. Uh, you're going to do two of these a year. And, um, and so you're choosing how to market it. What's the title? What's the theme? And the skills needed for this is the ability to lead others, assimilate talented people, keep them on schedule, keep the committee members, the rest of the, uh, task force members, um, on schedules, keep them, um, uh, uh, happy as well and you know that they're excited to be a part of part of it now this person is so much work they really need three people to help them one person to oversee the creative that is making videos or you know brainstorming one person to oversee the marketing uh, we have a whole booklet on that and then one person to oversee the production that is making sure the lights and the sound everything's working the night of uh, your epic event we've got a pdf booklet for you how uh, to prepare to make an epic event epic. Now, just because you call it epic doesn't mean it's epic. And so this person will devour this, know all the nuances. This is where we really peel back all the, the secret sauce of what we learned over 30 years of doing mass events so that you can have an epic impact. Even if you've got 100 or 200 or 500 or 1,000, whatever, you don't have to have 50,000 in your room to do this, okay? So, and then we have a second one, how to market your epic event. And so this is all the details. Your goal is not just to fill the room, but it's to fill it with the right people. The right people, of course, is the right age group, those that are 13, the most likely to come to Christ, but also those that have been incubated relationally. And it's very important that you understand we don't want people just to say, yeah, I'm coming to an event, but we want them to be incubated relationally. And so we have all the, the details on exactly what to do so you end up with a, a epic encounter with the Lord that is well thought through and all the, the nuance are put together so that they're able to be uh, uh, followed up. And then number five is um, documentation and measurements. Now, if, if I didn't mention this on number four, let me just say that they're gonna need three different people and I encourage you in the, in the materials there, you'll see exactly what you're looking for for a creative person, um, uh, for a, a detailed person, production, um, and uh, for uh, uh, an art person and marketing person. So what you need, you're gonna have to have a little committee there, okay? So number five is documentation and measurements. Now this person on your task force needs to be very detailed. You probably have somebody in your church that's good with IT. They're, you know, maybe they've got their own little IT company. Um, they work for an IT company or something. They're just really good. And this person ensures that all the dates for the assessments are all followed up and that all the every every date that's been put on the calendar people are meeting their deadlines and stuff but um what's really important is this person is really good at making sure um that they uh that that what the assessments that are supposed to be measured every four weeks are being measured that um the qr codes are programmed we have a 
it's not hard to learn how to do a, a Google form that, to a QR code that goes right into a Google Sheet. Somebody that knows IT stuff, they're going to know how to do that pretty easily. And then they get that information in front of you guys so that you guys can see, hey, what's on target, what's not. And um, so we've got templates, so forth for the planning part, like the next six months, what happens. Um, this person is going to be driving and making sure all those dates are filled in and that everybody's managing to those dates. Um, and then the most important thing is, is they're looking at the details for overall Project 13 and all task force members' details as far as deadlines. But what they're really most important thing is measuring the spiritual progress. We have a whole PDF on how to do this. All the uh, uh, assessments are in there. And uh, and so that you can really glean what's really happening. I already talked to you about this assessment. This is just the general one that happens at the beginning and the end of each trimester. We have a whole Agile dashboard that uh, it's an acronym. How do you measure each uh, area and how you stay on track with those things. And the very first measurement this person is going to do is orchestrate getting the average age of your church from 13 and up. And you can do it as easy as a QR code just like this with a Google form. And you need to do that two times a year. You should set that in the calendar because you want to measure exactly what it is now, benchmark it, what you've started at, and then what is it going to be in you know six months and then 12 months and then 18 months and that kind of thing and mark that on the calendar and then track your progress watching your church getting a little bit younger each time and it's from 13 and up anyways we have details on exactly how to do that so you're going to want to recruit your five members and talk to them one-on-one -on -one and then set a date for your month one building your war plan and just ask them if you think they might be a good candidate for one of those five. And even if the senior pastor can't make it every time, maybe have him come to the first meeting. Um, and, uh, and if you are the senior pastor, you can come every time if you want. Of course, you're the pastor. But uh, you don't have to feel obligated because this team, and especially as I'm coaching you guys, I'm going to help drive this team. This is the team that I want to meet with each time in a monthly Zoom call, either me and you and your team or with the collective, with all the other uh, members of the team each month as we meet. Before you come to your first Zoom meeting, whether that's just me and you and your team or on the, on the collective, is you're going to want to plan this first date, month one, building your war plan, invite all team members or potential team members. You just approach them. Say, this, you know, you're really good at this. We, we, I need somebody that's, that would be really great at you name it, you know, raising up leaders or managing the pathway or whatever, would you please come for like four or five hours? And we're going to sit down and we're going to go through this masterclass together and you're going to see a lot more of exactly what this means. And after four or five hours, you've got a whole master uh, plan for the next six months all laid out on exactly um, what needs to be done, all the dates are filled in, who's doing what, ask them to come for that launch session, right? And then... Each time when we meet on the Zoom uh, collective, it's a coaching time. So have all five of them come. We try to make it uh, a monthly, you know, kind of after. So if they're bivocational, if they've got another job, they can do it after work. They can come with questions. Hey, I was supposed to do this this month, but I don't understand it. Um, this is where we are. This is our city. This is our town. And then set dates for your Inventing the Future meetings. That's once a month. All five of you guys meet. Now, you'll probably see each other more often than that, of course. You're at the same church. But set dates. Get them to put on the calendar. Not all of them will be four or five hours, hours each time, just the first one. After that, it'll just be an hour, maybe two at the max. Okay, so your very first step is go find your task force. Invite them to come to your very first meeting to hear the vision, all about Project 13 and how they can make a huge difference. So uh, as I mentioned to you, you may have seen before in the, in the master uh, class that we've got this all laid out, like how you implement the very first step in implementing is the quiet phase. The quiet phase starts by starts by you getting your task force members to come. And then when they come on that very first day, it seems long, but that's the only long one. We're going to walk them through all about Project 13 and then walk them through how to build a battle plan to rescue the young people right there in your region. So that's the goal. That's the plan. And we're asking you right now to take this is the very first video you've seen about a Project 13. Um, take the tools here and uh, start making your invitation. Set your date. Uh, maybe it's a Saturday morning or a Saturday afternoon when uh, you think most people will be free. And plan your very first 
uh, task force meeting where you go through the master class. You can download the um, the uh, the workbook that goes along with the master class, the playbook, and uh, you're off to the races. Okay, so let me pray for you, Father, right now. I pray that every pastor, every youth pastor that just watched this, Lord, you would put people on their mind who exactly to choose. Lord, people that are kind of dormant, waiting to rise up to do something for your kingdom. God, give them just the right names. Give them just the right conversations. And Lord, we pray that something amazing, something fantastic, something beautiful would unfold for every single church that's watching this and in initiating Project 13 in their church, in their region. Lord, give us the harvest of souls young people coming to you, becoming lifelong followers who make disciples because they're getting stronger in their faith and they become disciples. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, I'm looking forward to this journey with you. God bless you. Let's go, baby.